whether you're looking to buy a magnetic clock or just looking to buy the magnets and make one yourself this is how I make magnetic clocks so I'm gonna take this out of the box laying out clock which is super hard to turn and push the pins into this clock which is so fun to play with let's do it okay so for tools you're gonna need some sort of needle nose pliers multi-tool works fine toothpicks super glue now super glue gel gorilla super glue gel works the best it's not messy and it's really easy to work with so I recommend that some 220 grit sandpaper a uh, razor blade electrical tape a small flathead screwdriver it has to be a really thin head a small Phillips head screwdriver paper towels and some sort of plastic a plastic bag works fine for materials you'll need your ling out clock eight ring magnets links in the description to where you can get these and eight disc magnets and these are also, I sell these as sets, so just check out the link in the description. And then Traxxas 50K. I find that works best, and you can get this from the cubicle. They're the only store that currently sells it. So the first thing you're going to need to do to make this clock magnetic is open up the plastic shell. And I'll show you how to do that very quickly and easily right now. Okay, the first thing you're going to want to check for is if your clock has already any open edges. So you just want to like squeeze right here and try to pull it apart. And the chance is probably not, but sometimes I've had up to two already open. So no, this one does not. And you can even press in a little bit. You might hear a little bit of cracking. But this one doesn't. Also, I have a more in-depth video on opening the clock, and I'll put it right up there. So you want to get a screwdriver that has a smaller head and then you're going to put it right on the top, right in the middle on the crack. So it's going straight down and I'll turn it this way so you can see it. And then you're gonna give a few hard taps with the hammer. Start lightly but then and make sure it's parallel with the clock edge. There, I went in. That one, it usually doesn't happen like that, but it went right in. So that one's open and it didn't crack or anything. Crack apart. Let's try the next one. There we go, another crack. See, it cracked right open. Another nice crack right there. Let's try it again. You want to make sure you're right in the center. Because you don't want it to crack in the wrong spot. Like this one, I can s you can see it's cracking next to the edge. So I'm going to go down to the end and crack it open there. There, see now it connected. So this one's not going to be as nice, but we'll still get a clean cut open. And there, got it. Okay, some may argue that using the screwdriver and the hammer. That method is not the best way. But as you can see here, this is the first crack we did. It came apart very nicely. This one came apart nicely as well. A little more jagged, but that's perfectly okay. 
This is the actually the worst one from this clock. That's still not bad at all. And then this one just came right apart. You can see there's a pin there and the hole right there. So definitely this worked great. Then what you'll want to do is just take the two shells off. Put those off to the side. And you got your clock. So there's two screws, one there, one there. You're going to want to take those out. And then just carefully take it out. There, you got one side off, screws right here. Then you're going to want to start by moving the metal pins, which are in the clock pins. So take out one of the pins. There's going to be a washer on the top. And then you just take the pliers and pull the pins out. Then what I like to do after removing the pins is take the plastic residue right here it might be hard to see on the camera but I like to remove that sometimes it's pretty big I just don't like that on there so very carefully I just shave that off so it's flat with the rest of the plastic and usually it's on both sides right there. Make sure you still have the washer on there and put it in. Repeat for all the other ones. Now this next step I cover in more detail in a different video which I'll put right up there um, and I'll link to it in the description and that's removing any plastic residue which is right in there. One of the batches, I guess, had a lot of residue and they didn't remove it. But now it seems like it's, they're doing better. So, what I like doing is just taking a screwdriver and running it over the plastic right there to clean it out. I'll show you closer up. It's really probably not necessary for these right here, but there still is a little bump, so I just like running the screwdriver in there and flattening it out, so it's all clean. Then you just put that right back on. So I finished doing all the light blue dials, and so now I'm going to take my clock face and lube the clock. So take your Traxxas 50K. Open it up. And then I usually just put a couple dots around the puzzle. So. so I usually put a little dot here. Not too big. You don't want to over lube it. It's really easy to over, over lube and they'll just slow your clock down. So just like three points around the puzzle. There. Then I take a little piece of paper towel and wipe it all around where the dials are going to be touching. So it's right over on the edge right here, so right in there, and then inside there. So you go inside. Wipe it all around. Go inside all of them. And you're doing it, doing this side right now before completing the other side so you can flip the whole clock over without it all falling apart. So you can probably see the lube's a little shiny, but I didn't like get way in there because it's not needed. So I'm gonna put this back on the clock 
without trying to wreck the whole thing. And then you're just gonna pinch it and flip it over. And then take the other side off. So now we'll scrape all these down. The pins are all done, so don't have to worry about that. And then we'll loop the other side. Now this dial has a lot of residue. See right in there. And that will what why residue is bad is when you're turning the dials, the spring will get caught and then twist up and then suddenly you'll just be solving the clock and it'll just jump and the dial will turn unsolving the clock so this can be annoying so this is an easy fix. Okay blue pieces are all scraped and I lubed this piece right here so now you're just gonna put it right back on trying not to disrupt anything then you can Flip it right back over. So this piece fell out right there. So you can just snap that right back on. And then it should sit back down nicely. So then you can take your screwdriver and screw it back together. So it's nice and snug. But you're not going to keep it that way. So now it's so now it, so it's nice and snug right now. But then I'm going to take it and back it out a little way until see that's a little, that's a little too wide I would say. So I'm going to turn it a little bit there just so there's a little crack. Because you don't want to snug it down so it, the dials are hard to turn. So this one's snug, and then I'm going to back it off a little. A little too much. Right there. That's about good. Okay, so you, because you want the dials easy to turn. No, no, I'm just going to wipe this face off, make sure there's no lube. You could do this before you put it back together. Okay, and then if anything falls out, make sure you put it in correctly. Now that you got your clock back together and tensioned correctly, you're going to want to have it like this with the screws on the top and bottom. Then you'll take one of your covers and put it on so the 12s are on the top and put the other one on fit it together make sure they went on correctly and this way you'll have a correct tensions and I'll explain more of that about that later then you're going to take one of the plastic pieces off you can just leave the paper in there and this is a step that a lot of people making magnetic clocks miss. And that's roughing up the area where you're going to glue the magnet on. This plastic is extremely smooth and the magnet and super glue have nothing to stick to. So, you're going to take some 220 grit sandpaper or anything around that will work fine. And you're going to rough up the area where the magnet is going to go. If you need to see how wide the magnet is, then you can just put it on and kind of eye it. It doesn't have to be perfect or sanded all around perfectly. Just about. But you don't want to scratch up the plastic anywhere you're going to see it. So I like just bunching up the sandpaper and then just going right around roughing up the area where the magnet is going to go. And this just gives something for the glue to stick to. Otherwise sometimes the magnets can come off. And then you are going to do this or all four on this side, take the other one off and do the same there. 
here's before we sand, and then here's after. See, just wings right where the magnets are going to go. Then once you're done, you can just put it back together, and then you're gonna wanna sand the pins. So you, you do that in the same way. Just take sandpaper and rub it all around. So you're just roughing up the plastic a little bit where the magnet is going to go. This one you don't have to be as careful because the magnet covers almost the whole top. Then after you're done sanding it down or roughing it up, you just want to take a paper towel and wipe it all off to get any little plastic dust or anything off. And then you're ready to start magnetizing. So to prepare to start magnetizing, you're going to want to take your super glue, get a couple of toothpicks, and then cut a little piece of plastic from the plastic bag. Shake up your super glue, just like it says. Then you can open it up and screw it like a a little a small, like half a pea sized amount onto your plastic. And then make sure to screw your super glue cap back on. Then when you're going to magnetize, you just dip the toothpick in that and then rub it on the magnet. So then you're going to get your clock, get your ring magnets. So then take one of your ring magnets and put it on the clock so you can see just how it's going to be on. You don't have to worry about polarity or anything like that yet. So you're going to want it right in the center there. So you're going to take your magnet and Put some super glue on it. It's a little hard to show on the camera. You're basically just going to put a thin layer all the way around. It's easiest if you hold it in your fingers like this and then just wipe it on. You don't want too much, or else I'll squirt it out and it'll make your clock look messy. Just put a thin layer, make sure it's all the way around, touching everywhere. And you want enough to, like see that's a pretty good amount right there, maybe a little bit more, but not much. Then, going to take your clock and put it down right in the middle. Now once you think you have it right in the middle, you can press it down, then lift up your clock, and look to make sure it is right in the middle. This one's pretty good. And then once you have it where you want it, press down without moving it and to seat it. So that one looks pretty good. I'll repeat it with a different angle. So now for the next magnets, you're going to want to check polarity. So you don't want to do with that because then it's more difficult to get it off. But you do want to make sure it will stick. So I just kind of test it like that. That's really wants to stick and then this side is going to be the one where you're going to put the glue. So, again, it's easiest if you pinch it like this. So you can still have control. Then you take the clock. It's best if you hold the magnet with all four fingers so it can't jump around anywhere. And you put it down right in the middle. 
take make the pin shake down so you can make sure see if it needs to move any and you only have a couple seconds to adjust it and then once you think you got it good press it down and it should be good then you know if you're doing it right if the magnet isn't going the over the hole at all so that one looks good and that one looks good as well so I got all the magnets on the first side but I want to explain polarity again so you'll do the first magnet then it doesn't matter which way it goes then the next magnet you want to stick on the same way you're going to take this off, put glue here, and stick it down here. So then, they're all the same polarity. Then, there's, you don't have to do this, but I like to do this. On the other side, you'll see they when you put a magnet down on an empty one, there's it's either tries to flip off or sticks down. I like doing it the way it tries to jump off. So that's opposite from the other side. So it's kind of hard to explain, but if you took the clock faces off after you put the other magnets on, it'll still work. So they're kind of interchangeable. Not sure if I'll kind of sh I'll show later. So we're gonna glue this one down. Another important thing to remember is when you have two or more loose magnets, don't like just let it let them go and jump back on because these magnets are a bit fragile and they can crack and break easily if you just let them smash together so always be careful handling them and don't let them just don't like drop them right onto another magnet so we can do this one now and then once you do glue your magnet down and you press it down once it's uh, don't let it dry too much but you can just take a paper towel and wipe around the edges if there's any glue sticking out so you really want to get that off because it just doesn't look nice but and then you kind of know if you're using too much glue if it's coming out so that looks good so now we've got both sides done Okay, now we're going to put the disc magnets on. So, first thing I like to do is just drop a disc magnet on the top of every ring magnet. And this is where polarity matters again. So, you're going to take some super glue and put it on the pin. You don't need a lot but you want enough so it covers the area and then you're gonna take this magnet so it's sticking like that but you're gonna flip it over up onto the pin and that way you'll know you have the correct polarity so I'll show you once this is dry you want to make sure it's in the center too and press it down hard but and hold it for a little while about 15 seconds is good okay there it's in the center so you, as you can see you want the magnet to stick on the inside so when you flip it over see how it's sticking on the inside of the other magnet so you'll flip it over onto the the um, pin with the glue so let's, we can do the next one and repeat for both sides. So here's what I was talking about earlier. How, or like why to do that ma those magnets the certain way. So it's when you, so I just took off the dark blue cover and here's the light blue one. So I'm gonna put it on and so it sticks. Let's see, let's see here, so it's still, it still works. So even if you got the covers 
confused and mixed up on these magnets, it would still work correctly. So now I'm gonna put it back. The next step is to electrical tape the edges. So I've got the 12s on top. I'm gonna do this side first. I also like to uh, electrical tape the sides that don't look as nice. So you got the top and bottom. This one, these two look nice. And this is the more jagged one. So I like to hide those under the electrical tape just so it looks better from the outside. So just gonna take your electrical tape, peel out a bit, and then you're gonna pinch the clock so it's tight and then put it right near the edge and try to center it and then just apply it all the way down and then you can look and just cut it okay if you cut it a little too short you can just stretch it so it fits nicely and make sure you're pinching the clock together while you're doing that you got one side done then do the other. Then you want to do the other side the same way. Just make sure you're pinching it tight and pressing the electrical tape hard. There's really some different ways how you can keep the sides together. I like doing it with electrical tape because it just stays on nicely and it kind of just blends right into the clock. But you, some people use cube stickers and some people do other things. So you got the two edges, so three o'clock and nine o'clock. Then, see this one, this really isn't coming apart at all, but sometimes it just kind of comes apart right here. So I like putting, so that's something I've started doing recently is putting another piece of electrical tape on the top and bottom. I think it just helps the magnets work better and just helps the clock overall but if like but you're trying to keep it loose so it's not too difficult to turn the dials but that's pretty that's more important how tight you did the screws and then after this step you're basically done you just want to break it in that's something I don't do with the clocks I sell. They still, when the person gets them, this is, they still need to be broken in. So, like, the plastic needs to rub together and just so it fits really nicely. So, here. So, final thing I like to do is just give it a nice wipe down. Make sure the tape's all on there good. And then you can test it out. Oh yeah, and I almost forgot, there's one other little thing I like to do. See these rough edges right here? Take a razor blade, run it right over those little plastic pieces that are sticking out. Just to smooth it out. There. And so that's how I make a uh, magnetic Lingao clock. I would love to hear your thoughts or comments in the comment section below. And if you bought magnets from me, thank you. And I hope you this video helped you make your magnetic clock. If you don't want to make one magnetic yourself, you can just buy one from me. I, I actually just love magnetic clocks. They're so fun. So... Thank you for watching, and have fun clocking. So I got all the magnets on the first side, but I want to explain parity again. I mean, 